I'm here at the Kentish Sound Forum where I've come to interview the biggest selling death metal band of all time, Cannibal Corpse. Okay, so I'm here with uh, Alex from Cannibal Corpse. How are you doing today? You say you have a bit of a cold? Yeah, just a little bit, but I'll be fine by the time we hit the stage. Do you like video interviews? Nope. Why is that? I don't know. They're just, they just seem more um, they're just intimidating, I guess. You know? What do you think about... Um, you've prob probably played the UK a lot, so what do you think about the UK audience and the energy that they give off? Man, it's, it's been great. Um, this might be one of the best times we've ever been here. We've, we've had amazing shows, every single one. Every single one of these shows has been amazing. We just play, played Portsmouth last night, and it was fantastic. So, um, awesome. You know, we're having, having a great trip over here, and hopefully, before the year's through, we'll be able to return for a headliner. So, that's what we're shooting for. And um, how has it been touring with Children of Bottom? How have the fans taken to you? Um, I think it's kind of cool. It's like, uh, it's different kinds of metal coming together. Children of Bodom, they are definitely um, a little bit of a different type of metal from what we're doing, but they're still, you know, killer band and great band to tour with. Um, we've really been getting, I think, a lot of different people out to the shows. In addition to our hardcore audience, there's been a, um, a lot of new faces at the shows, and it seems like people are liking what they're hearing. You know, I've, I've been meeting people after the shows that say that they've heard us for the first time and really, um, really enjoyed it. So, you know, I guess mission accomplished in that way because we really tried, we thought this would be a good tour to do to try and introduce ourselves to a few different people in addition to playing for our hardcore fans. We've been doing this for a long time. Um, a lot of bands, you know, their career is supposed to like decline it, I guess, after a certain amount of years. But um, it's kind of cool to see it stepping up a little bit. Where do you go next after this? Um, tomorrow's Paris, and then we've got a couple shows in Belgium, then Germany, then up into Scandinavia to finish it off. So um, after that, I believe April, we're doing a tour of Canada and North America, and then um, in the summertime, we're doing a big festival tour in the United States, and that'll be with um, Marilyn Manson, Slayer, Behemoth, Job for a Cowboy, The Black Dolly Murder, Trivium, God Forbid, Kill Switch Engage. That, that's called the Rockstar Mayhem Festival. And that'll be really something. So we've got a lot lined up this year. So uh, tell us about uh, your latest album. Like uh, the the great, it's, it, the press has received it really well. The people have, I mean, is that was that really good for you? No, it's horrible. It's <laughs> the worst thing ever. <laughs> no, it's been great. It's been uh, very surprising. Um, yeah, it's hard to believe, actually. I mean, we knew that people would be into it but it's been a little more than we expected it's been um, on the, the charts in America for two weeks now I mean just getting on there once on the Billboard top 200 album is a pretty big deal in the States for a death metal band I mean but being on there twice in a row I believe last week it was 66 and now it's like in the 170s somewhere so that's more than we ever expected we're getting great critical response the fans seem to really like it as well so um, yeah we're we're pretty pleasantly surprised that it's even going beyond what we had expected. And let's talk about the artwork. Um, what was the idea behind it? Because to me, one of the guys actually looks like Michael Myers, but like a skinnier version. Yeah, you know, we it actually is, um, it's Vince Locke, our artist who's done all the artwork for us. And he just kind of comes up with it. We'll send him lyrics and the album title and the whole thing. And he'll just kind of wing it on his own. You know, he makes up his own ideas based on um, what he saw from the lyrics and that so unless it's something that's a little off we usually will usually just let him run with it and that's what he came up with so we didn't have all that much to do with how it looks it's really Vincent Locke just winging it based on our um, song titles some artwork inside like you've done previously yeah that's that's what we did this time because in the past we've made um an exterior you know like a censored version and an uncensored version the censored version wouldn't have the lyrics and then this uns uh, the uncensored would have lyrics and gory artwork and we said well why don't we just put it all together we'll have like a, a somewhat less gory uh, cover and then on the inside we can have some really bloody stuff and then people are getting two pieces of art they get all the lyrics and 
everybody's happy and then we don't deal with quite as many censorship problems as well. So that's what we ended up doing and it's worked out very well. We've had like a lot of problems with uh, censorship in the past. A lot of um, people that carry or the chains that carry CDs wouldn't carry ours because of the, of the artwork. Well, right at Spawn, there were some problems with that, and of course, like a lot of the older CDs, Butcher to Birth and stuff like that, there was a lot of problems. I mean, we still we still have the gory artwork, but uh, with this time we just put it on the inside, really not on the outside. In the beginning with death metal, people were just like, well, what the hell is this stuff, you know? But now it's kind of, um, it's been around long enough. It's still, to people outside of the metal scene, it's still probably pretty shocking, but I think within the metal scene, people are pretty, even non-death metal heads, like just regular more mainstream metal fans kind of get what it is they, they've got a better understanding of it and then the censorship people probably just because there's been nothing bad happening you know it's not like there's been this huge outbreak of violence caused by the death metal scene there's been nothing like that whatsoever so they probably realize it's not worth their time to try and censor it because it's not doing any harm to anyone anyway as far as being shocking lyric wise I don't know if we are anymore or not it's hard I don't know and uh, what is your favorite Cannibal Corpse album artwork on the outside? Uh, probably uh, too many mutilated. Probably butchered at birth. That's good. I think, yeah, I think that's the best. And um, do you have any favorite horror movies that have come out in recent years? Um, I really like this movie called Inside from France. That's a really good one. And there's a really disturbing movie, probably one of the most ugly and disturbing movies I've seen in a long time called The Girl Next Door from the United States. Yeah, that one's, that one will stick with you for a while. It's really, really bad. And do you also have a passion for something like George has for Warcraft? Yes. What is that? Yes, hunting and guns. Hunting and guns? Yes. What guns do you have? Tell us. I have uh, a couple of salt weapons, things like that. Salt weapons? Yes, salt weapons. And you go hunting quite a lot? Uh, as much as I can. Do you live in a place where you can just go in the woods or do you have to go to a special place? Um, How does it work? We have to, I usually have to go to a special place because I live in a city now, which is in Tampa. So. And um, tell us, like, I mean, you've been in this band like for so many years now. What is the key to a band staying together and getting along and not falling out? Um, I think you just have to learn how to get along with one another. You know, like respect each other's space and that sort of thing. I mean, we're all stuck in a little bus for so long, um, and we have to work together closely that um, it becomes like a family kind of thing and you have to learn that same kind of respect for one another's space as you would in any other situation where you're living with roommates or whatever. You have to really um, learn how to deal with each other's little quirks and things like that. You can tell when someone's in a bad mood, leave them alone, you know, give them their space. And We're pretty good like that, I think. I think we've learned how not to push one another's buttons. So, um, yeah, you know, that, that's really the way, just being, trying to be respectful of one another as much as possible. Do you find that you, you still see each other when you're not on tour or working, or you kind of like, okay, well, I'll see you next time? <laughs> it's, you know, we do get together sometimes. Like, sometimes George will have, a, a like, a party at his house or something like that, and everyone will come out, or we go see the same concerts. You know, we if we're out at the, a bar like the Brass Mug, some, some of us will be there sometimes, or any of the bars around Tampa where they have death metal shows or other underground underground music shows we we see each other out a lot so we don't necessarily go over to each other's houses all the time but we're, we see each other all the time <laughs> all the time yeah. and um, can you tell us about any death metal bands that have come out recently that you think are great and we should have a look at yeah definitely there's um hour of penance from Italy um, deeds of flesh they've been around for a while but they just made a great new album and that just came out not too long ago um, who else has some great stuff? Well, just from Tampa, there's a band called Omniity that's really good. Um, feature a guy who used to be in the band Diabolic. And then there's um, Blasphemy Cruelty that has a member of Angel Corps in that band. They're really killer bands. Um, who else? Knox from Holland I like very much. So there's still a lot of great death metal. You just have to look around. But um, it's definitely there. And I think it'll always be, it'll always be great new death metal coming out. Just 
to wrap the interview up, can you tell me what is your guilty pleasure album that you have? Oh boy, there's probably a few that if people heard that I liked it, they'd be like, oh, what, do, what are you listening to? But I don't know if it's a guilty pleasure, but I'll listen to something like Bajork once in a while. I guess that's, you know, because that's there's still something unusual about what she's doing. It's not like just mainstream. There's something a little bit dark even about some of the stuff she does. So maybe that would be something that would surprise people to find out that I have in my collection is some couple Bjork records. But beyond that, I don't know. I'll, I do listen to a lot of metal and a lot of technical stuff that probably I'm more predictable than I'd like to be, actually. Because a lot of musicians sometimes say that they don't really listen to that much other metal because they don't want to be influenced. Do you feel, how, what do you think about that? I can understand where they're coming from, but I think you just have to, when you sit down to write, you got to tune out everything except your own creativity. Now, of course, things you've listened to are going to affect what you write. That's probably impossible not to have that happen, but you really should try and consciously tune out that other stuff and just come up with things on your own. Um, but if people have a hard time doing that, then I would understand why they'd want to avoid listening to other bands that are from their genre, at least during the writing process. Okay, well, thanks very much for this interview. And I hope that you have a, a great night and a good show. Yeah, I hope so too. And I hope that we get to come back soon for a full headliner of the UK. We'll be stoked to do so. I'd just like to say uh, thanks for the support. Um, it's been some of the best crowds ever, actually. And thank you very much. Thanks very much.